Hello, hello, and welcome, guys. This is James, and you're watching Let's Architecture. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I created this render. I've used it as a main render for one of my projects in my new portfolio. Speaking of which, it's actually taken me much longer than I expected because I want to finish it by New Year. It's taking up all of my free time. Hence, uh, there are some delays with videos. But I promise that once it's done, I'm going to spend all my time on this channel because I have big plans for it. Um, so please be patient and please share these videos. So without any further ado, let's architecture. So this is the model. Um, I've modeled this actual project, this the, the building in Rhino because it's my uni project and that's what I used it back then. Uh, but since I've moved to 3ds Max, so I simply imported uh, the model and added new textures. And I've also added the ground, the, the grass, and all, all, all the greenery and vegetation that you see. And you may ask why is everything in these well, boxes and points and it's actually really simple. If I were to load all models straight into the scene, then it would make the scene really, really heavy. To demonstrate to you, if I change this tree full mesh, at the moment it's 2 million polys. And now that I've changed it to full mesh, you can see it's 5 million polys. So basically this tree consists of 3 million polygons and if I were to load all the trees like this then it would make this scene really heavy which would be really difficult to just well even just simply move around so if you want me to make a video uh, specifically on trees and grass uh, then make sure you either write me a message or leave uh, your suggestions in the comment section below so once I was happy with everything I just rendered it so I've actually exported a lot of different options so uh, then I imported everything into Photoshop and before I begin I have to tell you that before I do a piece of work I gather a lot of reference imagery. So I'll show you that. And actually this was kind of the main image. So you can see in all of them, uh, the foreground, i.e. something that's close to you is very dark and contrasty. And everything that's kind of in the background is very light and well, foggy and faint, you know. Um, and this gives a great illusion of space and actually the depth of space. As you can see, the main issue with this kind of with this render is that it looked a bit flat. It didn't have a sense of depth. And if you compare it with the final one, this is more like the references where the background trees uh, are faint and everything that's in the foreground, like this tree and this grass and the bushes, they are much darker. So that's what I fixed and actually the, the whole image, like it, the, the studio, it was a bit lost in the space. So I think that the final one kind of actually focuses your attention on it. So yeah, and generally there's just you no know, more details really. So the first layer was reflect. I've just simply um, took this layer and put it on screen thus adding a bit more reflection. Then I added the Z depth, uh, making the foreground a bit lighter. So off, on, then added another Z depth. Then I sharpened the layer, so brought a bit more detail. So this is off, this is on. It's, it's especially, uh, it's seen greatly on this grass. So off, on. Then I started adding 
some dirt textures to this to the building so you can see there like uh, rain marks water marks Um, then I added some vignette to the foreground, then I added, added another Z-depth layer, then I highlighted the building a bit, added contrast, added a bit more contrast to trees because they were a bit too faint, um, added Z-depth to the internal side of the layer, change the tree, contrast a bit, added birds, added my Lego, <laughs> added a squirrel, also added these uh, lines to indicate where different timbers go, basically it's four pieces. Add a bit more glossiness to the glass. <sighs> Did one more tweaking to the actual final lighting. Just made it a bit lighter in some sense. And actually, <laughs> this was. And then I realized that I messed up the glass because in my design it's a mirrored glass, so it's one well, one way glass. So from from the outside it, it feels like a mirror, and from the inside it feels like a normal glass. So change that again using masks. I've explained them in one of my previous videos. I've repeated the same process that I've done to um, the rest of the image. So reflection, then darker, then details then glossiness highlight and just a bit more shadow so that's it and if you want to know how i how i went from this to this i actually used uh this google nick collection nik and i don't remember which ex the, the exact preset but it's one of them definitely download it it's like it's free so get it that's how I got this from this and I hope that you agree that this is better than this. <laughs> for those of you who want this Photoshop file, you can just basically go through each layer and actually look at the settings that I've used because you know it's not just normal, it's like lighter color, opacity, it's all different. So if you actually want to go through each layer individually then write me a message in Facebook and I will send it to you. Oh yeah, before you do that, uh, make sure that you uh, like this video and share this video. I think it's pretty good deal. <laughs> so yeah guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please like this video if you enjoyed it and please share it because it would really, really help me. And as always, Thank you for watching. This was James. See you in the next time. Let's architecture.